This is a quick demonstration of a project I've been working on. I am capturing microphone audio data in real time and graphing it in an interactive window and showing the frequency display, so the FFT, where uh, on the top we have time in the horizontal axis and on the bottom we have frequency on the horizontal axis. These axis labels are frequency in kilohertz and it kind of makes sense if I make a sine wave by whistling you can you can see exactly what that's doing. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, uh, so now that we get the idea of how this is working, um, if you can left click, you can drag, right click to zoom in, and again, this is real time audio analysis, and this is being done with C Sharp and Visual Studio 2017 Community. So all of this is free software. Um, there might be some GPL issues, but we'll talk about those in a minute. So let's just take a quick run through. Um, the graph is a user control that I made. I'm calling it Scott Plot for now. Um, here you have all your toolbox items, like your buttons and pointers. Well, you can just drop a Scott Plot user control right on the graph. And then when you r compile the program, uh, you can just assign X's and Y's to it, and it'll present in an interactive way. So this is the body of the code that attaches to the sound card and pulls the audio. Uh, so all of this is going to be, this is all open source on my GitHub, I'll add a link in the description. Um, but real quick, you pretty much just define a sample rate for your audio card. The buffer size, which has to be a multiple of two, because the buffer size, it's not really the maximum size of the audio buffer, it's more like how large a chunk is that's going to be analyzed for, with the FFT. And FFTs need to analyze only powers of two, like arrays with length of powers of two. Uh, so I'm doing 2 to the 13 here. But if you were to change the size of the FFT, it would give you different frequency resolutions. So if you wanted to really find discretion of very narrow frequencies, you can increase the power here, and it will give you very detailed frequency information. So I'll, I'll leave that discussion for another time. Um, but pretty much it attaches to a sound card. Oh, actually, no, let's, let's back up. Where am I? Okay, so here is where it starts. It attaches to a sound card, um, device number zero. That's important to note. Uh, if you look at your recording devices, you can have multiple recording devices, so make sure you have the correct one selected by changing that number. Um, it attaches to it, starts a sound buffer, you get it recording, and then it just continuously adds data to that buffer as it becomes available. And then in my form, I have a timer which goes off every what is it, 10 milliseconds, and it calls this function. So this function looks to see if we have a filled up buffer to make sure that we have new information, and it temporarily turns the timer off while it does the math and graphing, and then at the end it turns it back on. But this top part is responsible for pulling PCM values from the buffer. They are 16-bit resolution, so that means, well, 16-bit integers, and that would mean that uh, for every two bytes, we have one data point, and that's pretty much what this does. It gets a high byte and a low byte. It combines them with an 8-bit shift, and then it just makes an array of doubles. So at the end, we have Xs and Ys, which represents our PCM values, and then Xs2 and Ys2, which will become the uh, FFT frequency axis and the vertical power axis. And then once we have X and X's and Y's, working with the Scott Plot user control is really easy. This is all of it. Um, we have two user controls. So we have this UC1 and UC2, the Scott Plot user control one, Scott Plot user control two. So for the first one, you just assign the X's and Y's. And for the second one, I just assign the X's and Y's from the FFT. And it's a issue with the FFT. Um, it produces sort of a mirrored output. So here I'm only taking the first half, which is why I cut each of these arrays in half. But actually, that's pretty much everything. So I'm going to close just that function, and we'll look at this. Um, I have a little standalone FFT uh, function. It takes an array of doubles, and it returns the frequency component of the array of doubles. And um, it uses a chord, which is available on NuGet. And, um, and the other thing to worth, n worth noting is that I'm using N-Audio, which is also available on NuGet. So in the audio interacts with the sound card, and a chord gives me easy access to an FFT function. Um, I'm not. I'm pretty sure both of them are GPL licensed, but you should probably double check that before you use these in anything commercial. Um, and that's actually everything. There's there's the code that runs for the timer ticks, and the button just starts the timer. 
So I'm going to post all this code on my GitHub. Um, I do want to emphasize this is not intended to be a complete finished project. The intent of this is to be a starting point for a project. It's intentionally vague and intentionally simple. Um, maybe vague is the bad word, but it's intentionally not complex uh, because I think start to finish it's 100 lines. I want to make sure that anyone can get this running on their system and then they can modify it as necessary for their needs. Uh, if you have questions, send me an email, swharden at gmail.com. But to be honest, a lot of these emails are pretty technical, so definitely give it a good shot uh, looking around the internet for an answer before you ask a relatively simple question. Uh, but that should do it. And take a look at the GitHub. I'm sure I'll be posting uh, additional user interactive graphing libraries and that type of thing as time goes on. Eventually, so I try to swim against the current to live my life and let me be. So don't cast me a line, cause I'm wrong.